Now that you've started Animal Crossing New Horizons, I bet a lot of your time has been spent in service of one Senor, Thomas Nook. He wants your miles, he wants your money, he wants your time and attention, but I say it's high time to make some time for you. And that's why today I'm bringing you the top 9 tips for how to get more stuff in Animal Crossing New Horizons. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you're enjoying the game. If you don't have it yet, whew, you are in for a world of wonder. So let me know what your favorite part of the game has been thus far, or even your favorite thing you've got in the game in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you're pumped that Animal Crossing has arrived and you enjoy this video. Now, I'm not going to be teaching you how to get simple stuff. Everybody knows how to go hit the trees and hit the rocks and gather the basics. No, I'm talking the stuff that counts. Significant stuff like more goodies, more furniture, more awesome items for your house and your world to ensure that you're living that five-star island life. And we're going to start it off with number one, bigger pockets. Now, this may seem a little bit adjacent to the overall goal of getting more stuff, but bigger pockets are going to make the entire process of acquiring more stuff and then holding more stuff a whole lot easier. It makes your world really run quicker once you buy the first pocket upgrade and then the second pocket upgrade. Eventually, you'll be carrying 40 distinct items and that feels fantastic because now you have plenty of materials to DIY. You can hold on to just about everything and don't have to worry about dropping and swapping. And when you're going to place things around the world, you've got big pockets to carry what you need. These are expensive upgrades. They'll be found at the Nook Miles shop, but they are totally worth it. And I recommend beelining for at least the first one because it feels so much better to see those two rows expand to three and eventually four. Now that the list is rolling, let's head in a more direct route with number two, complete the mini quests for wisps and lost items. We'll start off with the ghost-like creatures who appear exclusively at night. If you approach a wisp, you will spook them. They'll shatter into five spirit fragments, collect said fragments, bring them back, and they will reward you handsomely. You get your pick between an expensive item and a brand new item, so you will get something high quality no matter what. I really like this way of working with friendly ghosts and also acquiring new gear. Now, in terms of the lost items, occasionally you'll find a missing book or maybe a knapsack scattered about your island. Who do they belong to? Well, if you talk to other villagers and find out whose missing item it is, they will give you a DIY recipe or a piece of gear. And this is another nice way to continue to build out your arsenal of more and more stuff. Hold up, hold up. Let's pause the video real quick to appreciate the Matan Pushi. It's a phenomenal hat, isn't it? The pipsqueak did us good. Number three is to shake and shoot. Now this one's a little bit simpler, but really make sure that you're shaking trees often. Occasionally you'll find a really cool piece of furniture popping off a tree. I got this incredible ice cream lamp. It is soft serve and it illuminates my bedroom. I love this thing and I wouldn't have even known it existed if not for my shaky shake habits. Also, once you do get the slingshot, keep your eyes on the skies. Occasionally, presents will be dropping. They're attached to balloons, and if you shoot straight up and pop them, again, more stuff for your Animal Crossing island. Number four is to mingle with all of the different traveling salespeople. They'll start to appear in earnest once you complete Blather's Museum and Timmy and Tommy's Nook's Cranny. And we're talking folks like Sahara, who brings tickets and rugs. The more rugs you buy, the more tickets you earn. The more tickets you earn, the more tickets you can cash in for more goodies. It's a revolving door of acquisition. Even Daisy May with her turnip sales. She's not giving you goodies directly, but she's giving you the opportunity to buy more goodies because those turnips can go from a low price to a high price before they expire within the week. Kicks will bring shoes and backpacks, and this isn't furniture, but it is nice to have those extra items to really deck out your character. And I feel like carrying a backpack should expand your inventory, but it doesn't. Again, you gotta just go for the bigger pockets if you want to carry more. I'll even mention Flick, the Bug Master, because you can sell off your insects for bells, which of course you can use to buy more stuff, but he also takes commissions. Trade three bugs for a sculpture of said bug, and now you have a real nifty statue to add to your home. Number five takes us to the shores, and every time you head to the beach, make sure you're alert so you can spot the messages in a bottle. Each time you grab one, you'll get a nifty note 
from a faraway friend as well as a new DIY recipe, adding even more to your crafting table power. Number six, take your talents to another friend's island. Yes, the mystery islands are cool and will help you build out your population, but do find some time to visit someone else's island because they may have things that you don't have. They may even have things that you don't have access to yet, and you can shop at their shops even if you're not that far along. Plus, if you're missing something such as, say, a ladder, you can go and use their crafting table to make it happen, which is a pretty nifty way to skip along if you're missing a tool or specific recipe. I also like visiting Friends Islands because you can grab stuff like different fruit that will sell for more and again can be converted into currency, which you can convert into, yes, you know, more stuff. Plus, all sorts of amusing antics occur once you step through those friendly gates, so make sure you find some friends and visit them often. As a side note, if you visit your in-island friends, well, they can grant you gifts as well, especially when they're home. If you spot a critter inside of their house and they're at their own crafting table doing work on their own property, go and speak to them. Oftentimes, they will reward you with a new recipe. Or if they're sick, bring them medicine and again, you're getting more goods and you're really building out your arsenal. Number seven may be obvious, but look, it's time we set it. You gotta get Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters as quick as you can. Now, Nook's Cranny is the one that requires a lot of resources. This is where I see everyone getting stuck so far in AC New Horizons because Timmy and Tommy want 30 iron nuggets, and that can be a chore, especially if you refuse to time travel. You're gonna have to use Mystery Island ticket tours to find more rocks, to grab more nuggets, and hope you get lucky with those on your island. I also pray that you didn't destroy your rocks because then this is going to take even longer, but once you are able to open Nook's Cranny, they've got a revolving wheel of awesome new items, and that is a great way to find something specific to your taste. I got this awesome skull for my front door. Mm, it's beautiful. I've seen tea sets, gumball machines, all sorts of goodies. And then the Able Sisters, they move in on their own. So, phew, you spend so much time and effort, materials, and mental power on Nook's Cranny. Able Sisters, they just open, and they'll give you an opportunity to go in and get all sorts of clothing options. I just love the UI and interface of the fitting room. I think it looks so cool as you try on the different clothes and then purchase en masse. And hey, a shopping spree is another form of self-care, so as you expand your wardrobe, you're making sure you look as fresh as your furnishings. Number eight is to hit up your mailbox and hit it up often. Yes, this is the place where your shipped goods will arrive, but it also houses many different letters from your mom and friends, and usually there's a present attached. And sure, your mom might send you something lame like a table mat, but occasionally, the Happy Homeowners Association may donate something super important like a toilet or a bathtub. And who knows what your friends will send. It could be a strange clock or a unique table. Either way, these come more often than you might think, so make sure you're checking those letters all the time. And last but not least, at number nine, let yourself fall down that beautiful DIY rabbit hole. This has got to be one of the best things added to this iteration of Animal Crossing. And yes, the more materials you acquire, the more things you can build, the more things that you build, the more things that you can place, but I'm also talking about how expansive your DIY recipe book can become. As you progress through the main quest of the game, you'll acquire more and more recipes, and you can expedite this by buying DIY recipe packs via Nook Miles. This is super important. You'll get better tools, better furniture, and even though I thought they might be kind of lame, they've actually proven to be really, really resourceful. So I recommend you get to know your crafting table, you progress through the main quest, you buy those DIY recipe packs when you have the requisite miles, and let yourself loose. You can fill this world with so many different things. I won't spoil any of the bigger, better ones, but let me tell you, there are some big things you can add to this world. And some of the recipes get so wild. We're talking, you need a rocket ship and gold armor. Oh, I won't say any more, but there are a lot of possibilities. And you've seen some of them in this video, from a light up ice cream cone to all sorts of furniture, tables and chairs, beds and haystacks. This game has it all. And you're gonna wanna get as much as you can so you can build your perfect home and your perfect island. 
Well, I hope these tips have helped you out as you adventure deeper into Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you enjoyed the video, leave a big thumbs up, hit that like button, it does help a lot. And let me know in the comments down below the favorite item that you have found thus far and how you got it. Were you shaking a tree? Did you shoot a present out of the sky? Did you talk to a friend or open your mailbox? I want to know what you got so we can see the coolest things that everyone has found so far. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon with more Animal Crossing, so make sure to subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Until next time, stay safe out there, be good to yourself and others. Switch Force, out.